This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. We start tonight with an update on a fight that left a Hazelwood East teen fighting for her life. 16-year-old Kaylee Gaines is in a coma, and a 15-year-old girl is charged with assault in the case. Tonight, we're sitting down with the suspect's attorney. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred in for Kelly Jackson. That fight happened nearly two weeks ago near the high school. The suspect is in juvenile custody right now. In an exclusive interview, our Christine Byers talks to that teen's attorney about a judge's upcoming decision to either keep the case in our juvenile system or try her as an adult. Christine. Mike and Ann, Greg Smith says his client was on the honor roll, taking AP courses and a member of the orchestra before she allegedly beat Kaylee Gain during a fight near the school. Andy says all of that matters when it comes to whether she will be tried as an adult in this case. The fight happened March 8th near Hazelwood East High School. The family of victim Kaylee Gain released a statement through their attorney saying the 16 year old remains unconscious with brain bleeding and swelling and they won't know the severity of her injuries until she wakes up. Greg Smith is the attorney for the suspect in this case and says her character and lack of any previous behavioral issues will matter at her certification hearing. You look at the types of rehabilitation efforts, programs and services that are offered, right? And that's another big thing. Can we still do something for this child in the juvenile court? Or again, are they so far beyond rehabilitation that there's no place left for them than adult court? Smith says his client remains in custody at the juvenile detention center in St. Louis County. He says she and her family have been threatened and they are praying for Kaylee and her family. He says the facts and circumstances that led up to the fight would be inappropriate to discuss while Kaylee continues to fight for her life and they will have their day in court. Christine, thanks. Today, police identified a teen killed in St. Louis County as they try to find the person who shot him. 15-year-old Lawrence Clark was killed in Pagedale yesterday afternoon. The Major Case Squad says that it's received nearly two dozen leads in the case. This homicide comes after several violent incidents involving other teens in North St. Louis County, some involving guns. There are a lot of guns coming into our communities, and as a result, they, they get stolen. Um, when we see car break-ins, we always advise um, uh, residents do not leave handguns in your cars. Anyone with information can call Crime Stoppers about this case. You can call them anonymously at 866-371-TIPS. Tonight, a St. Louis County parent is charged with a terrorist threat and harassment. Police say Tamika Stewart threatened school officials at Berkeley Elementary. It happened last week. Police say she was called to remove her child from school. When she arrived, she told police she saw the vice principal restraining the child. She took the boy to the hospital for trouble breathing. And while there, she went on Facebook Live threatening to kill school officials. She faces several years in prison and thousands in fines. A home in Manchester is a total loss after a fire this afternoon. This happened on Treetop Trail Drive. We're told a woman who lived at the home got out safely. One firefighter did suffer a knee injury while battling the flames. No word yet on what started the fire. It's been a cool day around the by state. Another one. Our weather first team is tracking some changes. Let's check in with meteorologist Jim Castillo. Yeah, you know, today was a little bit below average temperature wise for the low and also the high. The high got up to the current reading of 54 and we started out cloudy and now it is cleared very nicely. And right now at Lambert, it is still 54. Look at the humidity way down there at a 28% east southeast wind at 10 miles an hour. So that easterly wind is keeping things cool. Litchfield at about 49, but then you get south and west. Rala all the way to Centerville in the lower 60s at this point. So there's the area of high pressure and it spins clockwise. We're getting that easterly wind through the evening. A lot of the moisture down to our south will stay there, but a few clouds streaming into our southern counties, and it looks like a mainly clear night, though, for most of us. Lows once again in the 30s, and then highs tomorrow. Look at that, 70. Wouldn't be surprised to see some low 70s. Much more on that, and any rain chances coming up. More than two years have passed since an EF3 tornado struck an Amazon warehouse, killing six people inside. And now leaders of one Metro East community are taking steps to protect hundreds of warehouse workers from a similar disaster. Five on your side, Holden Kerwicki joins us with more. He's in Pontoon Beach. 
Well, Mike, and in the wake of that Amazon tornado, the mayor of Pontoon Beach says that Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker promised the town a new storm siren system. The state never made good on that promise, but Pontoon Beach le leaders did. Today, the village of Pontoon Beach announced a partnership with Gateway Industrial Park that will put portable alert systems in five warehouses north of I-270, as well as a new storm siren that will be audible not only inside of the buildings, but all across town. The system ties directly into the National Weather Service alerts and provides three controllers to the mayor, fire chief, and police chief that can remotely trigger the devices to alert workers of severe weather in the area. With the tornadoes, I mean, it's... Man, anything we could do, I mean, it might might save one person's life, yeah. it might save everybody's, you know, you, you don't know. North Point Development, which manages many of the warehouses in Pontoon Beach, including the warehouses that you see behind me, has promised to put an alert system in each of their facilities within the coming weeks. Reporting live in Pontoon Beach, Holden Kerwicki, five on your side. Tonight, the Francis Howell School District is scheduled to vote on a new black history curriculum. Last year, the district removed two black study electives, citing concerns about political bias. After protests, classes were reinstated with changes. The new courses focus on the foundation of black history, the Civil War, and the Civil Rights Movement. The school board is scheduled to vote at its 6.30 meeting tonight. Drivers traveling through Manchester now have new rules to follow on the road, and violators could face big fines. Five on your side, Travis Cummings went to a neighborhood at the center of a new safety initiative to get reaction. I hear it every day. Buses, cars, they come in from Sulphur Springs fly through, they fly through the intersection. Hopefully there's better days ahead for Cindy Welker and her neighbors in Manchester. I have had three children that went to Wren Hollow, Southwest Middle and South, and they all walked and I would not let them walk by themselves. Welker has lived in Ashley Place for 22 years, a subdivision right next to a new safety enforcement zone the city has greenlit. This week, the Board of Aldermen passed the ordinance for an increased safety area. It applies to the intersection of Wren Avenue and Sulphur Spring Road and the corridor connecting travel for three Parkway schools. Anyone found guilty of violations such as speeding, careless and imprudent driving, following too closely, improper lane usage or failure to yield in that area will face double the fine. I think it's fabulous. It shows that the chief of police at Manchester is really listening to our concerns. City leaders say this enforcement all came into fruition because of talks of building an early childhood development center in this area. But once they started surveying, it was something that needed to be done anyway. We're, we're just looking broadly at what we can do to make the area safe for, for kids, parents that are there to pick up their kids. For Welker, this is a small win. With talks of that new school, she says it's not just about enforcing the traffic, but the amount of traffic itself. That's just still more traffic through here all day and into the evening. Travis Cummings, five on your side. Coming up, accusations against Apple, the new lawsuit accusing the company of breaking the law. Food labels are changing. We verify how to spot which foods are really organic. <laughs> 